1987 was the dawning of a new era for the employees of Frontier, People Express, New York Air, and Continental. Recently emerged from bankruptcy, Continental had to grow quickly to compete successfully in the fast-paced airline industry. The changes that resulted have taxed employees to the limit, challenging us to dig deeper and reach further. Let's take a look at where we've been, what we've accomplished, and those who made it possible, the people at Continental Airlines. In January, Chairman Frank Lorenzo announced the most ambitious airline consolidation ever, pooling the strengths and resources of Frontier, New York Air, People Express, and Continental to create the third largest carrier in the nation. Virtually overnight, customers could fly Continental to 46 states in the United States and to Mexico, Canada, Europe, and the Pacific. Our fleet grew from 206 aircraft to 312, serving 171 airports instead of 82. The number of employees nearly doubled to 32,000. We now have within our grasp the strength and size to compete in tomorrow's air travel market. Within our reach is the ability to achieve the very important critical mass. National ads heralded our growth and assured customers that we were not just another big airline. You know what you'd like to find. Continental may help you. Ready checked in, Mr. Know Walsh? How it should be. Now New York's largest airline and the best value in the air. We lift you up where you belong. No problem at all. And that growth was just the beginning. New hubs were established and old ones expanded. By March, Continental was the largest carrier in the New York area, as well as the nation's capital. By the end of December, we had more flights from Denver, Houston, Cleveland, New Orleans, and Newark than any other carrier. And that was just on the domestic front. Internationally, we launched flights to Paris and expanded service to Mexico, London, and the South Pacific. The Continental Express Network grew throughout the year. We now have commuters in each region of the United States carrying customers to and from our hubs. And our growth didn't go unnoticed by the competition. Suddenly, Continental was a threat on every front, especially in United-dominated Denver. In April, United officials told employees that the carrier intended to put the screws to Continental, and the vicious torque campaign began. While United employees cornered our passengers at the airport, on rent car buses, and in hotels trying to convince them to fly United, Continental people were working on a counter-offensive. In September, one pass went one better than United's mileage plus, giving Colorado customers a chance to quadruple their frequent flyer miles if they switched to Continental's one pass program. A passenger appreciation day hosted by the Continental Employee Action Group told our customers we were glad to have them. A lunchtime conversion program held in a busy Denver mall the 1st of October resulted in 300 people pledging to sign up for one pass. But the battle in Denver is far from won due to United's historic dominance of the market through its Apollo computer reservation system. Apollo and American Sabre together control 65% of the computer reservation system market. If we had our fair share of this lucrative market, Continental could have earned a profit in 1987 instead of the loss we'll report for the year. By year end, Texas Air's System 1 was gaining momentum, boasting an 18% market share. But the battle has just begun. In the courts and on Capitol Hill, we're challenging United and American for our fair share of this very important distribution network. Texas Air has pledged legal and financial support to travel agencies converting to System 1 if they are sued. In one case, United sued an agency for over a million dollars in equipment rental and booking fees the airline estimated it would have collected from other carriers during the life of the contract. We are also supporting legislation that would allow travel agents to revoke contracts without paying excessive cancellation penalties. System 1 Chairman Dick Murray has testified before a Senate subcommittee 
that Apollo and Sabre make it almost impossible for their travel agency subscribers to freely choose another CRS. On the fair front last year, Continental became the industry price leader, setting the pace with revolutionary Max Savers. These fares allowed travelers to fly for less and got the phones ringing. Dear Continental Airlines, thanks a lot. Your low Max Saver fares have turned me into the world's innkeeper. After my mother-in-law, Tommy from college with a few friends, long lost cousins we wish still were, and then there was Chuck. And let's not forget uh, oh, that lovely couple we met on vacation stopped by five times. Continental, how much longer do we have to put up with these Max Savers? Continental Max Savers are here to stay. But we needed to do even more to put Continental ahead of the rest of the industry. Our bottom line suffered, particularly during the first and second quarters when we consolidated the airlines. It was an unprecedented feat to integrate so many companies so quickly. We added a hub that was losing $35 million a month. While this overnight integration was necessary, no one could have anticipated the tremendous operational problems that occurred as we tried to stem the flow of red ink. Problems encountered during the consolidation, delayed and canceled flights, long lines and uneven service, kept customers away. Other factors, like some unprofitable routes, an unprofitable hub and bad publicity added to the yearly loss. The Airline Pilots Association continued its attack on Continental that began in 1983. The latest escalation took the form of the so-called TAC Unity Campaign. Eastern pilots represented by ALPA encouraged Continental pilots to join. ALPA also staged a press conference charging Continental with safety violations after the accident in Denver. Continental pilots and officials immediately denied the allegations. So far, ALPA's efforts have been unsuccessful at Continental because many of our pilots remember the Union's previous tactics, operational slowdowns, unfounded allegations of safety violations, and campaigns to unsettle the flying public. In September, employee representatives from all divisions gathered in Houston for the Continental Service Congress. Their mission, to enhance our service quality to meet the needs of frequent flyers. The first step was to commit the monetary resources necessary to meet the challenge. Is the company, in fact, willing to put its money where, uh, where its mouth is with respect to, uh, to the product? Close to $400 million this company is expecting to invest in you and in the product that we provide to our passengers. We started with training. In all divisions, training procedures were revised and standardized, and new classes were incorporated. In flight, which graduated a record 2,500 flight attendants this year, sponsored the in-flight service symposium and joined forces with customer service to offer employees professional service seminars. Customer service also developed new training programs on a number of topics ranging from over sales to baggage handling. Tech services worked around the clock teaching mechanics new aircraft types, while reservations spruced up selling and customer service techniques. A company-wide management development program called Continental Advanced Leadership also took to the field. The $400 million commitment included remodeling facilities like Newark's North Terminal, which houses our East Coast shuttle operation. Cleveland grew to handle our expanded schedule. Image upgrades took place throughout the system. Standardizing our fleet inside and out also has been a top priority. Work has continued nonstop throughout the year. During 1987, we added 156 non-standard aircraft into the fleet. We painted 166 aircraft and reconfigured the seats into first and coach cabins on 143 aircraft. Fleet standardization will continue to be a priority in 1988. Our commitment to service starts with performance. In March, the company set some very tough performance goals, and we've come a long way toward meeting them. In September and October, Continental's on-time arrivals ranked second among the major carriers but bad weather and irregular operations caused our performance to suffer during the last two months of the year. As we moved into 1988, Chief Operating Officer Lewis Jordan announced a number of steps we're taking to get back on track. We're developing special crew scheduling emergency and severe weather contingency plans. A pilot and flight attendant 
are being selected to act as temporary operational liaison between crew scheduling management and our line crews. And task forces are working on improved scheduling procedures based on what we've learned since our consolidation. An interdepartmental meeting has been held to discuss problem areas and action programs and to stress communications in the field. To improve our aircraft dependability, we've established a placard control group, implemented a new computerized parts tracking system, inventoried parts at four additional stations where aircraft overnight, assigned material coordinators and regional maintenance directors at each hub, and leased additional hangar space in Houston to expedite maintenance that was being performed outside in the elements. These are just a few of the things we're doing to become number one in 1988. In September, we announced the start of a major service campaign at the Worldwide Performance Celebration. Announcing our intention to become the best airline for our times, we broadcast live via satellite from Houston to 12 continental locations. The celebration gave employees a chance to reflect on the progress we had made. Today is a day of performance at Continental, a day to celebrate all that we have accomplished, all the pride and heritage we have, and all that we will be achieving in the very near future. Now is our time. And we took our message to the public. Corporate officers met with travel agents around the country and explained the commitment to excellence that Continental has. We apologized to our customers and promised to deliver an improved product. Once Continental was called the Proud Bird, lately they've been calling us other names. The flight was delayed two hours. Can you at least tell me in why? In years past, Continental service was so good, people called us weeks in advance to be sure they could fly with us. But recently, we've bit off more than we could chew. I got to Cleveland on time, but my bags went to Chicago. Now, I would like for you to... Combining four airlines, we grew so fast that we made some mistakes. Well, it was all right. I had a reservation, or so I thought. When I got to the airport, they said the computer never heard of me. Can you a lot of hard-working Continental employees were embarrassed, so we did something about it. And the latest reports show Continental is back as one of the top two airlines in on-time performance. But we're out to be America's best again. We're investing one and a quarter billion dollars in new aircraft and improved airport facilities. And that's just the beginning. We know we've got a lot to prove to you, but we can and we will prove it. Because we're determined to be the proud bird we used to be. Without question, the employees of Continental were the constant that kept the company going. Employee input was essential to making the improvements in service a reality. Everywhere, at the Service Congress, in local quality circle meetings, and at the quarterly CEO forum, people put their heads together and worked toward a common goal. We recognized excellence in our co-workers and created new forums where ideas could be developed and nurtured. We reached deep inside ourselves to overcome tragedy after the accident in Denver. We've survived the incredible challenges of 1987 and laid the foundation to become a strong and formidable competitor. The energy, enthusiasm, and efforts of Continental's employees brought the company through an ambitious consolidation and proved to the public that our performance ranks at the top. These qualities will shape the future of our airline. Together, we will be the best airline for our times. I'm willing to give them a try, although I did keep my best Christmas present in my carry-on luggage. <laughs> I think you could definitely see that they're making this effort. It's obvious within the people, within the employees, that they're trying. I mean, they're trying to get off on time. They're very polite. You can see that they're all having a good time, too. It's not like they're worn out and tired like it seemed like it was a year ago. You know, I fly competitors all the time, American and United, and um, they're not any better than Continental, quite frankly. I was there when they were a very good airline. They were probably the premier airline in the industry. I guess February, March, April time frame was probably the worst part of Continental's history. In the last couple of months, I see it getting a lot better. I think the image has improved drastically over the last uh, six to nine months. The on-time performance is, is very good. Really, I'm down to you, Continental and United. They're getting back to the, the service that I, was, that I used to expect from Continental. It's definitely getting better.
A day didn't go by that the phone didn't ring, that I didn't have screaming clients, you know, saying they never wanted to go on Continental again. It has gotten better, though. And I've flown Continental recently, and I think that they've really started to get their act together. And gradually, the people now are coming back, and they're saying, hey, that wasn't as bad. You know, I heard these horror stories. Oh, you know, we were on time, we got in early, the people smiled, the food was good. We had a good time. I think that they've got a great future, that they had a great past. They've really worked hard, and I think it shows. I have a real good feeling about Continental in the future. When we first uh, merged back in February, it was a little bit of a chaotic scene here, but now we're, we're doing a lot better. Just look at our on-time record for the last couple of months. We're, we're up there with the best. Passengers who said they would never fly us again in February, March, and April, they're back and they're very happy. It has gotten so much better, let me tell you. We're working side by side with these guys. They'll, they'll work as hard as anybody I know. It has to be teamwork or it wouldn't just work like that. Yeah. 